This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This chapter is going to go through and look at mergers and acquisitions. So what I think we need to do first of all is just identify what the difference between a merger and an acquisition is. Just a little bit of technical detail I suppose because as we go through the, the rest of the, the chapter and the rest of the text and when we look at valuation aspects later uh, effectively look at it as one and the same thing okay uh, but what we've got uh, if we talk about them as M and A's mergers and acquisitions as you commonly hear them mentioned either in the news or on the television okay uh, then what we've got the is we've got is it a merger okay uh, now a merger is whereby two companies combine together uh, to create one business okay uh, so what we've had previously as an example uh, would be the in the airline business you've got is it British Airways, which was the UK-based airline company, uh, and they merged the with the Spanish airline company, uh, which was called Iberia. Okay, and what happens there is that they were two separate businesses. They have combined, and now what they are now known as, from a business perspective, is IAG. Uh, International Airline Group, or to give them, I think their full title is it International Consolidated Airline Group. You you still see from a, from a brand perspective, British Airways planes and Iberian planes flying their route, but they were two businesses that came together, merged, okay, to create a new entity with, with new shares in IAG, okay. Uh, so key bit is that there were two companies and now that there's one. Okay. Uh, what you also then got is what's referred to is an acquisition. Okay. Now an acquisition is whereby one company buys the shares in the other and is therefore the overall owner. So if you like, when we've gone through previously in, in F1 and F2, we've had a parent and a subsidiary, and the parent has gained control of the subsidiary, that is your acquisition, okay? So examples that you've got there, e.g., is let's just say, is it Kraft? So the, the US food business uh, went through there and bought, is it Cadbury's in the UK, okay, pardon me, you get the idea, okay, uh, so Kraft gained control of Cadbury, so Kraft is, is the parent company, Cadbury's is the subsidiary company, you know, that th they still operate, okay, Cadbury still operates as a, its own legal entity in the UK, okay, it is just governed and run uh, by the craft business and the craft shareholders which are based in America okay uh, that and the reason why I've used that as an example is because that is an example that was seen a while ago now as an example of what's referred to as a, as a hostile acquisition now that, that doesn't mean uh, that the, there's uh, warfare between the two, quite literally, okay, guns and tanks and, and military aircraft, none of that hostility, okay, uh, it is just whereby uh, Kraft made an approach to the shareholders of Cadbury's, uh, but the directors of Cadbury's did not want to be taken over by Kraft. Uh, the reason why is maybe they thought that the, the offer were, was unattractive okay so craft were undervaluing cabris which doesn't reflect well on the directors of cabris uh also as well maybe that there were other bidders that were preferred 
by the directors of Cadbury's. Maybe they would have wanted somebody else to take them over. Uh, maybe someone, I think we're thinking the world of food and chocolate, aren't we? For thinking Kraft and Cadbury's. Uh, so maybe Nestle, uh, maybe Ferrero, maybe Mars, maybe Hershey's would have been more of a preferred bidder. Okay. However, even though Cadbury's felt that the bid may be undervalued or that they had a preferred bidder, uh, Kraft still went ahead with the acquisition. Okay. Uh, and, and were ultimately successful. Okay. Uh, sometimes uh, a hostile acquisition is not so successful. Uh, that's then ultimately because it's been proven that the bid is undervalued, or maybe that somebody else has come in uh, and offered a better bid. Okay. Uh, so that's just a little bit extra to add in in terms of the definitions and the differences between a merger and is it there an acquisition? Okay. Uh, so we know the differences. And we also know what a hostile takeover is. Uh, if we go through there and just move on and focus pretty much on is it the your acquisition? Okay. Uh, what we're thinking about there in terms of our acquisition uh, is whereby, just to reiterate, you have there is it company A? We'll go through there. And acquire is it company B and company A will go through there and come acquire company B via either a cash purchase or an exchange of shares. Okay. Now I think it backs up maybe what you've done in E3, but maybe you've not seen E3 previously. Uh, maybe you're just doing the F pillar first. I don't know. It's up to you how you study. Uh, but if you have done E3, you'll be aware of the terms. Is it horizontal integration, uh, vertical integration, conglomerate integration? Uh, but let's just say there that company A uh, is EasyJet. So the low cost, I say UK airline, how long it will be a UK airline. Depends upon the outcome of Brexit and the negotiations that are happening there. Uh, but you've got company A, EasyJet, which operates in the airline industry. So it is an airline business. And the way in which EasyJet expanded, okay, uh, is that it bought, and you're all probably way too young to remember this. You possibly weren't even born. Uh, but there was a low-cost subsidiary of British Airways that was referred to or called Go. Okay, uh, and again, that was an airline business. Okay, uh, so what you've got there is an example of growth via acquisition. Uh, Ryanair, EasyJet's competitor, uh, grew internally, uh, so a little bit of organic growth. Uh, but EasyJet went through there and acquired Go. Uh, and because they are in the same industry, uh, that is referred to as a horizontal acquisition. Okay, uh, whereby you buy a business in the same industry. Uh, there are other types of integration as well as just your horizontal integration uh, what we could also go through and do there is we could go through and again using real world examples uh, you could have the is it Disney okay so everybody hopefully knows about Walt Disney okay uh, very much uh, revolves around uh, making films doesn't it and theme parks you know, and they've gone through. It doesn't necessarily have to be an acquisition. It could be a merger as well. Uh, but you've got there. They have gone through and I think immersed themselves with, with, with NBC. Okay. Uh, key bit there is they are in totally different businesses. Again, you, NBC, let's put it there. Uh, that's all about providing news, isn't it? Uh, Disney is 
is all about providing entertainment, whether that's films or theme parks. You know, so what you've got there is referred to as a conglomerate merger or conglomerate acquisition, okay, or conglomerate integration, okay. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be an acquisition, or it could be a merger. It's all about whether it's horizontal or conglomerate. You know, before when we mentioned, was it British Airways and Iberia? Again, that's horizontal, isn't it? Okay. Uh, we also mentioned as well, was it Kraft and Cadbury's? Again, that's another example of, of a horizontal merger or horizontal acquisition. Okay. Uh, other bits that you've got there, um, we can go through again using global real world ideas or examples. Uh, has everybody heard about Starbucks? Know of them? Be aware of them? Yeah, okay. Uh, again, Starbucks operate coffee shops, okay. Uh, and what we could go through and do there is they need their raw materials, don't they, that go into coffee, which are coffee beans. So maybe they could go through that and acquire a coffee bean farm. Okay. Uh, again, what you've got there, uh, that is an example of a vertical merger, a vertical acquisition, a vertical integration. Uh, and the reason why, because that is within the supply chain. Okay. And what's happening there is that the coffee bean farm is effectively, and we'll put it there in black, is the supplier, isn't it? It will supply the goods that it produces to Starbucks. And by Starbucks acquiring or merging with that coffee bean farm, you know, it has more control, uh, it will be cheaper, uh, and therefore that will give better value uh, to the business and then hopefully more wealth to the shareholders. Okay, that, that, because you're going down the supply chain, is referred to that as your backwards vertical integration, whereby what you could also go through and have there as well. Uh, is let me get this one right uh, again going back to the world of Disney uh, Disney could be there again still the same industry isn't it the entertainment industry uh, what Disney could go through and do there is could merge or acquire some retail stores okay because those retail stores are your distributor in okay? case so they are part of the supply chain uh, again if they're part of the supply chain then that is vertical integration and because you are looking at effectively a different way of selling your product so Disney may have sold it uh, to, to wholesalers who would then have gone through and sold it to the final customer. They're removing that wholesaler. They're removing the middleman, aren't they? Okay. So, therefore, that will be forward vertical integration as you are going through there and acquiring your distributor. Okay. Uh, again, bits and pieces. Uh, what color shall we throw it in? Uh, orange. Uh, your, your backwards vertical integration is very common in the oil and gas industry, okay, uh, whereby all of these oil and gas businesses are buying uh, the, the drilling companies that, that take the oil and the gas out of the earth. Uh, and then if you look at forwards vertical integration, uh, that's very common when it comes to looking in the real world that brewers brewing alcohol and pubs okay you know you, you brewed your, your lager uh, why then go through and sell it to, to a different pub why don't you go through and run the pub yourself uh, and distribute your lager to the final customer that way okay so they're just two common areas in terms of 
adding to your knowledge in terms of backwards and is it forwards vertical integration okay excellent uh, so, so we've got this idea in terms of what we're doing. Uh, we're going to have two companies merging to become one. Uh, we're going to have one company acquiring another company to be an overall bigger company. And if you think about acquisitions, there's millions and billions worth of dollars of acquisitions happening every single year. Okay, And these businesses are getting larger and larger and larger particularly if you think about the online businesses and, and social media in terms of Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram and all the various acquisitions that have happened between all of those various different businesses. Uh, you know, we've spoken there about the different types of acquisition. That would make a great question, wouldn't it, uh, in terms of multiple choice question or select all of the following that, that apply. Okay. Uh, but I think what you've then got to go through and think about then is you've got your acquisition that's taking place. You know, the big question there is, why are we doing it? Okay, Why are we taking these funds from the shareholders and using it to acquire another business? Okay, well, It comes back to, to the essentials, isn't it, of what we have in terms of our decisions with regards to financial management, isn't it? You know, the reason why we are acquiring another business or we are looking to, to merge with another business, what's the fundamental, the primary objective? Yeah, increase shareholder wealth. We want to make those shareholders richer, don't we? Even if it's the last thing that we do to mankind. As long as the shareholders are rich, it doesn't matter what happens to the planet. Okay? There are other considerations that you need to bear in mind in today's modern society, and, and rightly so. Okay? The reason why we're merging, the reason why we're acquiring is to try and go through there and increase shareholders' wealth. Okay, we are operating on behalf of those shareholders. We need to make them richer. One way that we can do that is to buy another business because by buying another business, we are then taking the earnings of that business and then buying those earnings. Hopefully, uh, that is meeting the required rate of return of the investors and therefore it will be maximizing their wealth. Okay, uh, how is it then that by increasing shareholder wealth, uh, that goes through? Or how do we achieve, if you like, that increase in shareholder wealth? Well, there's two ways, if you like, of thinking about it. Okay, uh, One way of ensuring that we are increasing shareholder wealth is by looking at that target company. And we're going to buy it cheap. Okay. Uh, we value that business based on our own valuation techniques. We look at what the market is saying it is worth. And we think okay, that what the market is saying is that it is a lot less than what we think it is worth. Okay, So if we're buying it on the cheap, the reason why is because we think that we have an undervalued target company. Okay. So the person doing the acquiring, okay, so if you like craft, uh, they are the predator. Cabri is the business being acquired, is the target company, okay. So when craft were buying Cabri's, maybe in terms of increasing the wealth of a craft shareholder, they believe that Cabri's was undervalued. Okay, they thought that it was worth a lot more. So why don't we buy that business and create the value that we think it is worth? Okay. Uh, the other reason why we think we can increase shareholder wealth is that we think we can go through that and improve the target. Okay, we can go through that if you like. We think that there are some form of benefits that can be had uh, with regards uh, to improving that target. And we like to give that a fancy name. So we think that there is 
some synergy that exists within the business. Okay, uh, so the old idea that uh, two plus two is five. Okay, I know it's not. Okay, two plus two is four. My my my, my mental arithmetic isn't that bad. Okay, but two plus two is five because when I take the profit of the predator of two, profit of the target of two, add them together, that's four. There must be an additional one million dollars worth of synergy benefits, gains that can arise from the acquisition. So, so whether that synergy is some form of reduction in the costs, okay, uh, whether that synergy is some form of increase in sales okay maybe there's some cross-selling opportunities that we can exploit uh in terms of reducing the cost you know we, we don't need two headquarters uh so we can get rid of one so therefore saving costs uh we, we need uh to reduce the levels of staff so again that will reduce the cost you know we don't need two hr departments we don't need two procurement departments we can reduce the, the, the volume of staff that we have in the business and therefore reducing costs improves profitability improves cash flow and therefore if you think about valuation will therefore increase the volume uh, it could be that there are tax synergies tax benefits to have with regards to the the integration uh again i'm not going to go into the tax benefits in too much detail i think that would just overcomplicate it and it, i don't think it's really going to be examined i think you just need to be aware that there could be tax benefits you know it could be the Cadbury's. I don't think it was the case, but your, your target company could be loss making. And if it is loss making, if you acquire a loss making business, uh, can you utilize those losses in the overall group? Okay. So therefore, you're going to save money by, by saving tax because you're using the losses elsewhere within the group. You're not using it within that business that you have recently acquired. You're taking them and spreading them about. So again, increase the wealth overall of the business it could be as well there could be some form of financial synergy within there in terms of getting access to cheaper forms of capital whether that's cheaper debt finance uh, maybe there is equity finance that you can then use uh, for, for, from acquiring that business maybe they have shareholders that are prepared to to invest once you've bought the business I, I, you know it depends what shareholders are left doesn't it once you've acquired the shares uh, from the 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 target shareholders okay uh, but th th you need to think about those benefits whether that's the, the revenue benefits the cost benefits the tax benefits or the financial benefits okay all of those should hopefully combine together to increase the shareholder wealth and we know that that is the primary business objective when it comes to looking at financial management okay uh, other bits that we need to go through and consider uh, again if, if you look at what we have currently within the UK and again depending upon uh, how long the video lasts for it will obviously depend upon what is currently happening it could be a year or two years time uh, but at this moment in time you've got a uh, Tesco's business in the UK which is a, a food retailer and that's gone through there and acquired book of foods which is a, a wholesale food business Again, the, 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 there's issues there in the UK with regards to competition. Okay, you know, if Tesco controls a wholesale food business, might it then start charging more beneficial prices for itself uh, to make it cheaper for Tesco than what it would then charge other businesses that rely on that wholesale food company? Might charge more to some of its competitors in terms of Sainsbury's or Morrison's. And that then therefore makes it a little bit unfair. So in the UK, we have the Competitions Commission, which goes through there and monitors acquisitions that are made to ensure that it is fair, not from just, say, a shareholder perspective. It doesn't really focus on the shareholder. It looks upon the, the consumer's perspective and ensures there that consumers have equal rights. So whether that's individuals like you or I, or whether that's other businesses, it's important to, to bear in mind that any large scale acquisitions that take place will go through there and be subject to scrutiny by the Competition Commission, okay, or the equivalent elsewhere within the world. So, so as it stands, there are some of the main areas that you just need to have a, a, 
a view about in terms of acquisitions and mergers what's a merger what's an acquisition okay uh what do we mean by by the difference between the two explain the different types of mergers or acquisitions that there may be in terms of horizontal vertical and conglomerate and splitting vertical into forwards and backwards integration looking at why we might go through there and think about the acquisition due to the increase in shareholders wealth and that target being undervalued or from its acquisition we can create synergy and then finally going through there and thinking, well, if there is a large scale acquisition, then that will be subject to, to scrutiny from the Competition Commission or somebody similar that exists within your country. OK, uh, there you have it. In the next video, we'll go through there and begin to look at not mergers and acquisitions, but starting to think about divestments. On that, I'll see you then.